Welcome to my masterclass. Now today we are talking about the subject, Christ did not promote poverty. I say that one more time, Christ did not promote poverty. You see, one great misconception in Christianity is the belief that Christ grew up in poverty and that his parents, Joseph and Mary, were poor. Now, scripture doesn't teach that. You see, God did ask Joseph and Mary to raise his son, Yeshua, but he did not ask them to pay for it. So you see, when the wise men visited the boy Christ, they came with gifts. Now, Matthew chapter 2, verse 11 says that they opened their treasures. Now, look at that word. They opened their treasures. And then they presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, not that word again, treasures. So, you see, when you see that word, you understand that they, they gave him things that were very, very valuable. Now, if you read Matthew chapter 20, verse 2, you see, in those days, a day's salary was a denarius. Now, a month's salary was 30 denarius. Now, gold, that quantity of gold that they gave him, we don't know exactly how much, but we know that they put it in chest. It was more than a lifetime's wealth. Now, you see, when you, when you, when you read about good frankincense and myrrh, you immediately think that gold was the more valuable of, of, the, uh, of the gifts that were given to him. No, in those days, Frankincense and myrrh were just as valuable as gold, and sometimes researchers actually believe that pound for pound they were more valuable than gold. Now, a researcher, you could Google this or you can research it, Tom Holland, he estimated that the value of the wise man's gift to the boy Christ was 39 million US dollars in today's money. Now, I don't know how correct that is, but what I do know is that those gifts would have enabled Christ's early parents, you know, his, uh, his parents, Joseph and Mary, to be wealthy. Now, you know, Christ's family, they went to Jerusalem from Nazareth for the annual feast. Now, you see that in Luke chapter 2, verse 41. Now, that verse says, every year, his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. Now, only families with means in those days did that. Only rich families did that. Now, Joseph and Mary and their family did not just go once every other year. They actually went, you see that from the scripture, every year. So, you see, he grew up in wealth. Now, yes, after he became an adult, Christ moved out of his earthly parents' home and chose, now look at that word, chose to become a poor itinerant preacher and teacher. But there was a reason why he did that. It was not to teach us that poverty is good or to encourage us to be poor. No, 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 no. Turn your scripture, read 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. Now that verse says, For you know the grace of our Lord Yeshua, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you, 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 and I, through his poverty, might become rich. Christ became poor as a spiritual sacrifice to his Father and his God, so that all those who believe in him, that's you and I, might become rich through his poverty. Now, some people will cite the evidence of Christ asking John to look after his mother in John chapter 19, verse 26, as evidence that Mary was poor. No, actually, that's not true. And this is why scripture says we should study the scripture. So now, ask yourself, why did Christ ask John to take his mother Mary into his home? You see, in those days, if you were executed by the Romans, you know, if you were executed, and then not just by the Romans, but also the Jewish authorities, it meant that your family became a pariah in Israel, in Judah. So your mother would not be able to go to the market to buy and sell, for instance, because of the stigma attached to your, um, your execution. Your sisters would not be able to marry well because of the association with you. So that's why John had to, in fact, you know what? I went to Ephesus um, in, in, in Turkey, modern day Turkey. That's where John lived with Mary's mother. Now, John actually had to take, uh, sorry, Christ's mother, Mary. John actually had to take Mary away from Judea all the way to, they called it Asia Minor then. It's now called Turkey today. And they lived in a house. That house is still there. It's called Maria Manor or the house of the Virgin Mary. John stayed there until the Roman Emperor Domitian exiled him to Patmos. And you can, it was in Patmos that he wrote the book of Revelation. So you see, in conclusion, poverty is not bad. It's not bad at all. But, you see, accepting poverty and thinking that it is in some way pleasing to God and His Son Yeshua is ignorance because it does not please them. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, it says that, and this is what Scripture teaches us, that the love of money is the root of all evil. Money is not the root of all evil. 
The love of money is the root of all evil. As a matter of fact, the good Samaritan could not have done his good if he did not have money. He would have just been an ordinary Samaritan. And it's very important because if you don't learn this, Satan will confuse you and make you admire poverty. You see, money is not everything. But you still have to have it. Because when words fail you, listen, money may not fail you. Now, I'll give, you an, I'll give this example. Suppose maybe you, you had an urgent assignment, you had to go to the airport and then to get the ticket to fly maybe to London. And they told you that, oh, the only seat available is a first class seat. Now, you might be speechless. But if you had money, you know, words will fail you, but money will not fail you. My name is Renaud Mokri, and I hope this message uh, gave you some insight into the word of God. Thank you, and God bless you.